How do? How you all doing? Quick rando chat about a um, couple of ideas I've got. Well, things have been bubbling around in my head since all of this um, kind of, you know, um, football Super League pizzazz and shit all kicked off. Especially as of what's been going on, looking at some stuff that's from the past and things like that. Uh, everything else, especially with the expanding the game and things like that. There's a couple of things that maybe we could reopen that we did in the past. Um, maybe there's other things that we could try further down the line. I don't know, but, you know. Anyway, um, as always, I'm going to start putting it at the, at the beginning. If you like the content, give it a thumb up. Share it about, because sharing it always gets the eyeballs on the content. And if you've got something to say, stick it on down below in the comment box. And if that um, little um, spot is red, why don't you give it a good old oosh and turn it from red to grey. Because that helps too. Growing this channel is something I actually want to try and do. I might be a bit of an idiot and I might go flat, 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 flat. But I do actually want to try and get this channel moving on up. So come on, guys. Give it a sub up. Give it a like. Give it some comments. Share the hell out of it. And let's go smack, smack, smack. Come on. Let's make these videos biff up there. Come on. Give it a biff. Anyway, speaking of biff. I've been watching a few of the um, things to do with when uh, uh, Wigan was in the uh, sevens. In 96. Now I could see that we made it into the final. Now I know some of you are probably going to say that I should know my history. You have to remember I was a kid at this point. I was nine years old. The stuff in my memory that I don't even remember. Yeah, I can remember places in Blackpool that have burnt down. From when I was three or four. But I can't remember certain sporting events. So come on, give me slack there. I am watching that. At the moment I'm... Halfway through the one where we were playing Leicester. So I paused it at the minute. Just because I had a few things to do. Um, while I was watching that. I was just coming up with some, with some ideas. Maybe we maybe we should have a Rugby League Sevens set up going on. Because I know the, the, the women's game is really kicking on. And it's really driven. Well, more expansion and evolution of the game. Maybe we could open up a, a, you know, a Rugby League Sevens thing. Because I'm sure they do that. Down in down in Australia and New Zealand, I'm sure they've got uh, a sevens or something like that that they do, or a different a whole different kettle of fish that they have down there. Because the American League does look like it is getting off to a good start, because there is a couple of signings that have been batted about, and a couple of uh, people going for like co doing like coaching helps and stuff like that out there. So there's something going on there. I'll do an in depth thing about the NARL again at a later date this is more how can we grow the game at home and also to our international friends now obviously we do have some French teams over in the Super League Championship and League One who obviously we've got uh, Toulouse in the Championship and we've got Catalan Dragons in Super League right now so we do have some international, we do have some flavours of international teams going on. Now, again, this is a little quick shot off the cuff. So I haven't got it all stored in my memory banks, whether there is actually anything kind of like super professional out in France at the moment. I'm sure they've got, obviously they've got rugby going on, but I don't know whether theirs is like semi-pro or what. So their level is quite um unknown to me at the moment i am going to do a lot more investigations to see how this would go along with maybe if we could get spain and italy involved because obviously with france and italy being a union and stuff like that to do with all of that plus with all the world cup teams that are coming out and all of that lot we do need to maybe look at growing it as a bigger base as well also as well growing it more homebound as well we do need to try to expand a bit further south, even though, yeah, that is obviously going to be Union Heartland and everything like that. But we do need to try to spread that out, especially with what was going on with the football and all of that with their um, with that Super League idea, which is um, seems to have faded away because the six English teams that were in it have decided to bin it off, which 
Uh, if any of you guys are Mighty Car Mods fans, in the bin! Thank you for that one. I just thought I'd throw it in the bin in there. Uh, there's quite a few things that do need to go in the bin right now, especially with a lot of other stuff, but hey, um, yeah. Maybe we could have our own European thing, you know, like how Union have got it with some of their stuff. Although they've got, uh, I think it's like the Heineken Cup or whatever. Again, sorry, I know, but it is their version of like the Champions League for Rugby Union. Maybe if we had it as well, we're like the top two, three, four teams out of Super League. Or maybe let's say it was top three teams and plus if it was if that if the Challenge Cup winner wasn't in the top three, they also get in. Could help out there. Hey you never know. Could go one one or two ways with that. So that we could have, let's say you know, the best from Scotland, the best from Wales, the best from Ireland, the best from England, then the best from what? France, Italy, Spain, wherever. If we could grow it that way, it might also help out as well because there would be a bit more money. More money coming in, more TV, more eyeballs. The growth is an exponential. So that would help in the long run there. Also, one of the other things as well is do we need to have a sort of, I've probably said this before, but do we need to have a state of origins effect? You know, the whole Lancashire, Yorkshire, Big Biff, come on. Some of the top teams in Lanc, some of the top teams out there, do we have it where we have a state of origins sort of thing? Or do we spread it out a bit where you have people from Lancashire as old Lancashire versus new Lancashire, which is smaller? Versus Greater Manchester or whatever. Do you have like the Mancunian, Liverpudlian smash up? Do we have it like that? Do we throw it with the, the Lanx Cup, the Yorks Cup? Do we go back to some of our older our old, older things where we have a couple more more pots and pans to win? Come on. It's a good idea because it might bring more telly money, more telly money. Like if BBC got more invested in it, if ITV threw a few quid at it. If C4 chucked some at it, if BT Sport got involved and chucked some at it, you know, it might help internationally as well because the, the more the more finals you have or the more big games you have, especially for international markets like out in North America and certain parts of the world, they would only tune in for that one big game. They would only tune in for, especially with, back in the early days when the, the, the satellite footage of what they could get and the satellite coverage, sorry, from what they could get for the FA Cup and Premier League and all that lot. They would only view in for your Liverpools, your Man United's, stuff like that. They would only view in for that or the FA Cup final. They would only go in on that. Maybe if we had a different outlook on it, we could do that. If we had that, also as well, I know I've definitely said this in the past, but... The, the magic weekend thing it's a great idea having it all in one place but if we could have a magic weekend a b or c and have it as a travel a traveling circus some people would probably hate that but the whole idea with that is you could get in get in the bigger thing plus let's see if you had like the sevens from what i can see from this, the thing to do with the sevens is wigan were the all conquering team back in the late 80s through into the mid 90s, even spreading all the way up to 2000s. Just at the cuff anyway, from what I can see here. They were invited in onto the sevens to show what they could do against some of the best union sides. Now, from the bits I've seen, they've absolutely pasted them. And sevens is a hybrid, well, it's a shoot off from union from my understanding of it. It's basically seven men, seven minutes. On a full size rugby field, which when you're a kid and you've only got tiny little paws like mine, <laughs> you struggle. Yeah, I did try to play rugby, but I was absolute naff. But you know, hey, we're all good at something. But judging from what I can see with a lot of the things that are going on, we do need to maybe look at some of the past and bring up some more ideas of more. Championships, more challenges, more cups, more little playoff things. 
you know, we do need to try to get that back because if we could get the telly money coming in, it might make the league more interesting. It might actually grow the sport a bit more because Union is seen as the de facto or the standalone code. And then if you're up north, then you'll know about league. But most people don't know about league or they've heard about it, but they're not that bothered because they're stuck with what they know. Because of all of this expansion stuff that's going on and all the growth of the game, and we do need to save the game and we do need to keep things going. We do need to maybe look at some of the ideas of maybe, yes, bring that back the Lancashire Yorks Cup. Maybe trial a state of origins idea so that if you you, know, you can choose for your, like, you know, your where you are, whether you want to be aligned to the, the Yorkshire colours, whether you want to be aligned to the Lancashire colours. Again, yeah, I know this is all War of the Roses, but... If you know your history, everyone's got got a bit of an allegiance to one. Most of us, our families are mongrels. It's like, back on my dad's side, like three or four generations back, they were in Yorkshire. On mum's side, again, every, everything's all muddled. We're all muddled from here and there. It just depends on where you want to be aligned. Obviously, I'm going to say Lanx, come on. If I was a player, yeah, I'd say Lanx. How many of you out there would 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 say that you want like you want to be on the white or you want to be on the red? Everyone's got their agenda. Everyone's got their place in that one. State of Origins is a good idea, but I don't know. Oof, don't know how that will work. Um, State of Origins wise, especially in this country, because there's I don't know how that's gonna uh, do. I've got to I've got to learn about the state of origins thing so i'm going to have a look into that do also as well this is something else that i'm going to throw in there as well do we go back to where it was before with like the old franchising sort of thing where the relegation wasn't always nailed on or from what i believe anyway maybe, maybe we've already maybe we've already had always had uh, promotion and relegation all the way through do we need to have maybe a slightly more closed loop system where it's not always going to be like that because are we are we stifling the game by having this promotion relegation thing and a lot of things through the history with that million pound game as it was known for the the, the playoffs to say say if you bacon if you're the team which could possibly be relegated or to save yourself and boost your team if you are the championship team that would win that playoff game to get in. Are we ruining it with that? Is 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 that is the million pound game a sticking point? Is it a problem? Do we need to have you know a period of time where a team if they are chosen to come up is pinned away from being relegated or does it stay as and is it perfectly fine for you? Because for me, I'm coming back into this. I'm coming back into rugby after a long time away. As you've probably noticed, I do make a lot of um, things to do with NFL because for me, NFL was something that I just fell into because at the time when I was learning American football, while I was in college, I was dating an American girl. So I learned more about American football and NFL rules than anything else because her family were big into it and were massive, massive fans of the New York Jets. I just gave them the middle thing. I, I was having a giggle with them and just went, well, I'm going to be a Giants fan then, just to annoy them. But I was doing it in a jokey way, which they didn't take it badly. They just went, okay, your choice. You're the outsider anyway because you're not American. So, hey, whatever. But, you know, I came into all of that. So I do a lot of analogies to the American football side. Yeah, as a kid, I grew up through that period where Wigan wore the old dominated thing, but that's all I knew. It was just Wigan win, Wigan win, Wigan win, Wigan win. All the time. Everything was in. I just knew it would just wipe the floor. Never really paid attention to it because I was never really into sports that much. I was more into reading and just nerding it up. But, hey, I've evolved slightly. I've gone from being, I'm still a, a nerd, but, you know, I'm still more... I do like watching sport and I do like 
going to the stadium and being part of it because it's where I am now from where I was I'm a lot closer to the stadium and it's a lot easier to get there where I used to be where some of you have probably seen the old videos where I don't have these purple walls I've got the um, orange walls and whatever or I'm in my living in my old living room and stuff like that or I'm out and about out in Sheffield stuff like that yeah I'll probably still be doing the old Sheffield vlogs but Eventually that will um, come in time because of all of this coffee boy mess which is going on at the moment. But yep, as I take a swig of uh, chalky milk. But hey, things will come, things will go, things will evolve. But back on tack. So do we need a state of origin thing? Stick your ideas down below. Do we need to do some of the length shots, cut things again like that. Do we need to, again, have our own version of sevens? Is promotion relegation one of those things which is a good thing, bad thing? Is the million pound game help or hinder? Also as well, for the upcoming um, things that are going on. So Thursday, I'm going to say not night, but evening, six o'clock kickoff. Warriors are back at home at the DW. First time in um, quite some flipping time. They're back home against Castleford Tigers. Now, two unbeaten teams, 200% records, something's got to give. This is going to be really, really tight. And I mean really tight. Who's going to win? Obviously, I'm going to say Wigan. But I wouldn't be sore if Cass won because their displays at the moment are shit hot we need to be on form we need to not fumble we don't we need to not muff a catch we cannot afford any slip ups against Cass we have to be tight to the line but we've also got to stay loose which it with some players it flows, with some players it doesn't. They kind of go off a little bit. But hopefully we're going to be getting back in because as the season progresses, some more players are going to be coming in and coming out. Some players are going to be rumbling in and rumbling off. It's going to happen and it is going to get close. Now obviously, some of you are obviously going to be wondering, how come I've not mentioned Jacko yet? Because my brain doesn't function like that, remember? So, yeah. Hastings is leaving at the end of the season. We kind of knew this farce was going to bubble on, but at least the saga's now ended. Now, everyone can knuckle down and just get back to it. Now, I'm going to have to do it this way. Harry King Smith. Yeah, he signed for another four years. And he said that he wants to, to be the, 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 the man up. Man up and be Hastings' replacement. So that we don't really need to, to get another one. Now, good shout, lad, good shout. Shows your ambition. But, them some big shoes. Them is some big shoes. Now, yeah, we can see that you're a shit-hot player and you can do it. But, you need to be a shit-hot player, but you need to have the inner shit house. Come on. You are going to have to have that little bit of nose about you and that little bit of, a little bit of spark and drive. You're going to have to... Kind of, you know, kind of oust them off and force them away from you and get it. You, you've got you've got the legs, you, you've got the mind. And time will tell whether you, you are that superstar. Because Estins is a shit-hot player and you have got shit-hot shoes to fill there, lad. That's all I'm saying. That's some shit-hot shoes to fill. Anyway. I don't know what the um, thing is going, who's actually going to be in the squad this time at the moment because I haven't seen the line out sheet yet. Um, all of that, I haven't seen the line up sheet, but you know, does look like French is definitely going to be coming back, and there's obviously going to be the uh, is it going to be uh, Big Bev or um, you know, or is that actually going to keep it? This is on the this is on on the board now. Both, these, both of them are pl were playing shit hot. It is going to be um, fun. Yeah, no, today seems to be a shit hot day. 
seems to be my 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 word of the my word of the day. Sorry, me um, stutz coming back. Me stutz is coming back. Well, you know, hopefully as well the injury to Jai Field is going to be uh, not quite as bad, and by the time he gets back, he's going to going to have his form back. But it it, it is going to be a biggie. This the if he gets if he gets on the field by the end of the season. It'd be good luck to him. I think, to be honest, don't rush, my lad. Don't rush. We can see the best of you next time, next year out. Don't rush it. Get yourself fit. Get yourself big. Get yourself comfy. And rock on. Because next season will be the time. I know that all of the mystery around you was all, oh, well, you, you're going to blow the league away. Some people were thinking that Jayfield was going to blow the league away. To be honest, this year was going to be his bedding in you and next year was going to be his take wings and fly. So my feelings on that is Jai will be good. He's going to be one of the better players and he will be one of our... He, I'm going to have to use it. He's going to be our shit art player. Because we need a shit art player. Well, players... We obviously need a couple of shit top players. And we're going to need one or two players that have, can do a bit of shit house. Just not full on shit house, but we're going to need a few that can give it that inner shit house. And do that little slide to the line and do that off the shoulder shift. And then be able to stiff arm them off and palm everything away and get hold of it. And then motor down the field we're going to need that we're going to need to be able to bust the tackles a bit easier the lads that are coming in some of the lads that were blooded in the challenge cup game they did really well it's that some of them just needed that one or two games or that that little extra and they get it you can see it's coming together for the lads you can see it's coming together just need to do it now Obviously, as well, the same night that it's going to be the Wigan Cast game. Later on that day, it's going to be Uddersfield against St. Helens. Now, again, St. Helens are unbeaten, and Uddersfield aren't exactly all on the board yet. They're not. They're just starting to get their, get their feet back together. So it's going to be quite fun and interesting to see that one rolling through. Now, obviously, all, a lot of you are going to be um, wanting me to say that St. Helens are going to get smashed in the mouth. One day they will get smashed in the mouth, but to be honest, I can't see them having much trouble over other, over uh, Giants. I really can't. It's going to be... If others feel can find the feet and actually stymie them, it'll be fun. But I can't really see it happening. Saints are going to win that one. That's inevitable with that one. Saints... Winning streak is going to come to an end at some point. Wigan's winning streak is going to come to an, uh, an end at some point. Same with Tigers. That one for Wigan and Cass, that's going to be a tight one. I think it's it's going to be... It's either, it's either going to be a one or a two point win on that somewhere. That one for St. Helens is going to be a try win at least with that if... They keep their feet, and if Huddersfield don't trip them up, but inevitably the winning streaks are going to come to an end somewhere. When my feeling is that Wigan could just, just win against Cass, St Helens will win. Obviously, I'm going to have a quick look at the NRL stuff as well, which I can see uh, tomorrow morning for us over here at ten fifty in the morning. It's Penrith Panthers versus Newcastle Knights. Now I'm not up on who's on form with that one. At all. So I'm going to check in on that one. All I can say is and most NRL games are quite entertaining from the highlights that I've seen. So I ain't really going to put a prediction on that one. But I know someone's going to say, give it a cheeky one. Um, so I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. I'm just going to say, Newcastle by a try. I'm just going to throw that one out there. I might end up doing more predictions videos. I'm just going to throw the prediction stuff on the end of this one. This has gone from a quick shot into a longer random ramble. Anyway, I'm just going to sign out now.
Stick your ideas down below if you've got any. Don't forget to like it. So smash that sub button, so turn it from red to grey. And if you love it, share the contact. All right, anyway, that is me, Foxstar3088, signing out. Peace.